Greetings, one and all. So here we go again. That time of the week when I blither uh, and bore you with stories of days of old. Um, so this week I thought I'd tell you about recording studios, something we uh, seem to have uh, been to several times uh, over the years, or sort of back then anyway. So uh, we used several. I don't think we ever used the uh, the same. And there's one I'm going to particularly tell you about, but uh, in chronological order, because I'm organised like that. Uh, the first, the split album, was done at some tiny little studio in Nottingham. I don't think it was even particularly a recording studio. It was a room with egg boxes, uh, if I'm honest. And we spent about six hours there and released a record. Uh, but after that, uh, things started to uh, get more interesting because obviously we signed to Earache. Um, and so Crikey was recorded uh, at a place called uh, Slaughterhouse, lovely title, um, in Driffield. Uh, and that place was great. And no longer exists. It mysteriously burned down. Nothing to do with us, obviously. Um, but um, it was a place where all the Ear 8 bands had started to go, um, mainly because of Mick Harris. And Mick Harris had, uh, I think it was a Lush album that had been released, and he really liked the sound of it. And that had been recorded there. And that's why Napalm Death went there. And consequently, Napalm went there. So did Carcass. Then we did. And so on it went. And we all went there for a while. Uh, so uh, particularly fun. Uh, it was a good time. It's where Colin Richardson was uh, based, who went on to do Machine Head and stuff like that. Um, he was there and Steve Harris, our guy, was there and, and so on. So that was our first one. Kids in America. Um, we went to a right old swanky one for, for, for the Kids in America single. Uh, we went to Great Linford Manor, I think it was called, uh, or The Manor in Great Linford, which is Milton Keynes, really. Not as exciting as it sounds. Um and we were in one studio when public image were in the next door studio. So how glorious and rock and roll is that? Um, so that was done there. But the, the the one that's fun and the one that's worth telling you about was um, when we got around to doing um, uh, Bozo Clowns. And for Bozo Clowns, we got sent, uh, I was going to say on holiday, and that would strictly be true, actually. <laughs> um, but uh, we got sent to Sawmills Studio. And our sawmills was quite incredible. Um, so it's uh, an old hippie commune. Uh, it's on an estuary um, just off Foy. Uh, that is the correct pronunciation you will find. Um, Fowey, if you can't find it on a map, um, F-O-W-E-Y. Uh, but Foy, it's called. And what you had to do was pile all your rubbish, um, equipment if you're a normal band and rubbish if you're lawnmower death, um, into a van drive to Cornwall, go down some back lanes, end up on this estuary, and there are no roads to the recording studio. So they send a boat. That's a fairly exciting start, isn't it? So you load all your rammel onto boat, and then they drive you up the estuary into a little harbour, and that's where this recording studio is. So that's a heck of an adventure, uh, just to get there, really. But this place is amazing. It's full of legacy. Is, um, it uh, is, was uh, sawmills. Um, which is why it's worth telling you about it, really. So this is the place where Muse got discovered. Uh, so they were um, working at that studio um, and, and they were physically uh, and discovered um, demoing there before they became the monolith of a band that they now are. Uh, so they were discovered out of there. Um, so was uh, Supergrass. They were another one that were uh, discovered in that place. Um, and the band before us, so uh, recording before us, um, was The Farm. Uh, and The Farm, uh, besides releasing that bloody awful single that um, the, the Labour Party used forever, um, around sort of new Labour time, um, their manager was Suggs, and the same Suggs that's in Madness. Um, and he had a bit of a wobble um, before we got there. Uh, not that us, obviously, uh, but he had a bit of a wobble, chucked his cup of tea into the mixing desk uh, at the studio and pretty much melted it because uh, liquid in recording studio equipment doesn't make a good bedfellow. So uh, we got a brand new desk when we got there, so that was quite nice. Not always for our producer. Um, so they were the band before us, and I believe I'm right in saying I think Robert Plant followed us in. So what a lovely juxtaposition uh, that is. Suggs and Farm, Law Mow Death, Robert Plant. It's a, you know, fairly standard linear line, that one, isn't it? So we get to this studio and it's great. We're there for a, I think we're there for a couple of weeks, actually, on the whole, or best part of. 
Um, it's probably not a cheap place. Near Ake have sent us down there to, uh, to, to, to go and record this. Uh, and we had a jolly good time. I mean, this, this studio know how to look after you. I mean, they, they, you know, you had a, you had a cook um, and all this kind of thing, like a housekeeper uh, who made you dinner every night for you and stuff like that, which was quite lovely. Um, and, and I've forgotten her name, but um, she was great. She well looked after us. Um, and so we went and stayed in this really big house up an estuary in the middle of nowhere. Uh, nobody to disturb you. Um, and we were there to do some work. Well, the, the, the net result was, I'm not entirely sure how much work we did by that. I mean, probably me did very little work. Um, but we did book all, to be perfectly honest. Um, so I, I do remember there was a guy called Dylan. Uh, and Dylan was a creative young man. Um, I, and uh, I think he was just a big shock of mad hair uh, and so on. But he was like the in-house engineer guy at the studio. Uh, and his job was kind of to look after you, you know, make sure the producer was happy and all the bits were happening and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, as engineers do, they, they, they run off and look after you. And, and he, his superpower, and he did have one, uh, was to find illicit scrumpy um, from the darkest hills of uh, Cornwall. So we just constantly gave this guy cash to, uh, to, to go and buy stuff, um, predominantly uh, illicit cider uh, and consequently didn't do a lot of work because we were drinking lots of illicit cider um so uh this was a like, glorious time you're getting paid to do this really um that's how it kind of worked so um i mean you had all sorts they gave you air rifles you got boats i seem to think air rifles and boats um became one of the same thing at one point so i think as reanimator as well i think they had a very similar experience where they all shot each other in canoes um and you know we we we, we just went there and had an absolute blast but did shuffle to be perfectly honest and the album uh, to whatever degree my memory's hazy now um wasn't really finished when we came out of the studio it was supposed to be but it was nowhere bloody near done um, and so the net result is when we went to Fond Studios, which was the next studios we went to, which was in Sheffield, which was uh, S Express and Phil Oakey's place. Okay, so hang on to all this name dropping. Um, you know, I did most of the vocals in that session when we were supposed to be mixing the album. So, <laughs> hey, it was fun though, wasn't it? Uh, so, uh, so you know, a really, really great time of both Eric's budget uh, and time and our time. Uh, but I've got to say, it was possibly one of my favourite memories. Um, not sure it translates as a story, but it was a damn fine time as a band. Um, and we just had a ball. We just went on holiday, really had a good time, listened to way too much Cardiacs and Mr Bungle, I seem to remember, um, and, and generally got slaughtered on um, Scrumpy. So <laughs> good times <laughs> is what we would say, isn't it? And then finally, I think we finished up at the Windings. That was the last studio we ever used, um, which was over in Wales. That's where James recorded Sit sit Down, bloody sit down, that one. Um, uh, and that was done there. Um, and that's where we recorded Billy. Uh, but for me, Sawmills was probably the one. It, it, it was the time we got to a rather expensive, luxurious recording studio uh, and basically frittered the budget. Uh, and good for us. It's not quite happy the, the Happy Monday's going to Jamaica, is it? Uh, but it was a damn fine time. So there you go. That's what I thought I'd tell you about this week was the uh, the joys of recording. Uh, new album, Chuffle Like That, all recorded in Steve's bedroom, my back bedroom, um, produced in Chris Clancy's, I don't know, possibly in his bedroom, but I suspect Chris Clancy being a proper producer has probably got a proper studio in his house, I don't know. Uh, but he might have been in his bedroom, I don't know. Uh, but the whole thing, actually, you don't need recording studios anymore. All the stuff's there. You can get all your equipment at home for very little money, use your software uh, and bring your producers. Um, and, and sadly... Um, it means we don't have to go around um, spending record company money um, anymore. Um, and it's possibly not as so much fun, really. But it sounds better, ironically. <laughs> so I don't know how these things work. I'm not technical in the slightest. That's Steve. Um, but there you go. That's that's the history of Law Modeth's um, um, glorious recording career. Um, basically going around uh, recording studios, drinking beer, um, and pretty much doing sweet Fanny Adams. Uh, that's how it works. There you go. See if I can come up with another one for you next week. And as ever, I'm going to close off 
with the weather here, here and here. And if not the weather, please pre-order your album. I'll put you the link in the bio. Please come to London. I'll put you the ticket link in uh, the bio. Um, and you've probably seen this week, we've got some new shirts on sale in London. Uh, so they'll be up for grabs if you come in. And they look fine as well. They really do. There you go, folks. Take care. Stay safe. See some of you in a couple of weeks down in London. Expect another old man blithering story next week. Take care. Bye.